Your voice acting home studio would be where you'd record the lion's share of your recordings. Once you get established, you could well be regularly invited to city centre recording studios, but these visits where you'd often physically meet clients will often be for high value jobs, like for prestige game or dubbing work, so I'm sure you won't complain. Now, it's so important to have a recording facility in your home because it will just give you so much more flexibility to record jobs without even leaving your front door. You can even do recordings in your pyjamas if you want to. That's the great thing about voice work. Nobody can see you. But you could record, edit and send files within minutes of being sent jobs by email or, of course, respond lightning fast to audition posts to beat the competition applying for that particular voice acting job. Also, having your own home recording studio means that you don't have to waste cash hiring anywhere else or waste time traveling to other studios. Also, when you start working for companies around the world in different time zones, you may find that the commercial studios in your town or city will be closed anyway. So you can just pop down to your home studio early in the morning or late at night when your client is in working hours and earn some more income. Now, in our training courses, we go into a lot of detail about setting up a successful home studio. But basically, you need an area that's quiet and also has minimal hard surfaces. You need soft surfaces to absorb sound so you don't get reverberation or echo picked up by your microphone in front of you. Many people start by setting up in a large walk-in cupboard or closet surrounded by all their clothes. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as it sounds good, nobody can see it. Everyone thinks about the microphone when voiceovers are mentioned. And when starting out, the Rode NT1A has been a popular budget choice for years. Or, if you have a bit more cash, the AT2020 is a very robust microphone with lovely bass response and a crisp high end. If you have issues with extraneous noise in your recording area, you may think about using a shotgun mic. These microphones are used in film and TV work and are very directional, so they'll only pick up your voice when you speak at the end of it. The problem is, voice acting work usually involves a lot of moving around and being very physical, so if you're just doing straight narration, it's best to have a microphone with a cardioid configuration. Now, for a lot of voice work, the recordings sound nice and rich when you're close to the microphone. This is called the proximity effect. But unfortunately, the closer you are to the microphone, the more likely you are to create a nasty plosive sound, particularly on hard syllables like the letter P. So a pop filter is essential for every voiceover. A metal mesh one like this is a great type to choose. It's easily washable. You can see through it, although uh, the metal edge can be a little sharp, so be careful. You'll also, of course, need a computer. A quiet, solid-state laptop would be ideal. You don't want clicking hard drives and pesky cooling fans ruining your recordings. If you have a USB microphone, it will plug directly into the laptop. But for quality voiceover work, and certainly for high-end work, you'll need a large capsule analog microphone with an XLR socket in it. You'd be looking for a quality sensitive condenser microphone like the AKG P420. Or, if you can afford it, the Neumann TLM103. These will need a USB interface box with phantom power for the computer to read the input from the microphone. The microphone won't be able to be plugged directly into the computer. But what software is best for voice acting work to record and edit your recordings? We'll look at the options in the next video. Click the link if you'd like to download this video's PDF. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or watch the video once more, just in case there's something you've missed. Now over to my left, you can continue watching. Just click the video you'd like to watch next. And please click the thumbs up icon to let me know if you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you've not done so already, remember to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos.